Hello, welcome everybody watching online. I'm so honored to be here with you. I believe God has something special for you today as we continue our sermon series, Summer Jams Mixtape. So first, let me open up in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Father, thank you for everyone watching online and those going to listen later on. Father, I pray that your will be done in their hearts and in their minds. Use me as a vessel for your glory. And help them to receive this message without distractions and with open arms. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to jump right in with a story from my childhood. You see, growing up, I remember when the CD first came out. I remember going to Circuit City. Come on, Circuit City. Come on, Circuit City. And I remember my dad buying a CD player for us. Now, it looked like something out of a sci-fi movie. It was silver, it was shiny, it was big, almost like the size of an old school VC, VHS. And my brother and my sister went nuts. Every week, they would go to Tower Records. Come on, you guys remember Tower Records. Anyways, they would buy a CD there. And so over some time, they had this giant collection. And so I spent a lot of time listening to my brother's CDs. You know, so as a normal, healthy, preteen, I would turn my video games on, I would put on my headphones, and I would listen to Rage Against the Machine, and Sublime, and Tupac. Man, I was an angry, aggressive little gamer. <laughs> but you see, as I got older, I learned how to burn songs on a CD. So I started to create my own mixtape. The songs on my mixtape that I listened to high school look a lot different than what's on my playlist today. You see, as we grow older, our experiences change, so our music changes, and we are constantly remixing and renewing our music. You know, one, probably one of the biggest struggles that I see with believers today is that our experiences change, our relationships change, but our thinking remains the same. We keep putting in and playing this old mixtape, and we keep finding ourselves struggling because we aren't remixing and renewing our thinking. The truth is, the quality of your thoughts will determine the quality of your life. Because how we think, that determines how we feel. And how we feel determines what we do. And what we do determines who we are becoming. So to continue our sermon series, the title of this message is Remix the Tape and Renew Your Mind. Remix the Tape and Renew Your Mind. My friends and family, I want you to lean in today. If you can get this message, your whole life will change. I promise you. You see, I'm so excited because God has sent me here today to tell you that if you can change your thinking you can change your life. Are you ready to remix the tape and renew your mind? Come on. So our main scripture we're going to be looking at today is from Romans 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His perfect and pleasing will. You know, with this pandemic, 2020 is probably one of the craziest years of our lives. Amen. Social distancing, wearing masks. Wiping things down constantly. I've never used so much hand sanitizer in my life. And I haven't seen Clorox wipe in four months. But you see, I think we go through all these steps to keep the Rona away from us. But we may never think what we're allowing into our minds. The thoughts that are playing in the background. It's like there's songs that are on repeat. This is the mixtape that you have playing all the time. So check this out. 
Many studies indicate that adults can have somewhere between 60,000 and 80,000 thoughts every single day. That's crazy, right? But wait, there's more. Of those, 70% are negative and 90% are repetitive. This, this means that that mixtape, that soundtrack that's on the background can be mainly negative that can lead to feelings and actions that are negative. You see, as we age, our thinking needs to develop. So the first thing we need to do is be honest. So maybe we'll start with me. I'll be honest. Can I be real with you, church? I hate ants. I cannot stand ants. God help me, I hate them. They get in your candy and your soda or Amanda's gluten-free tortilla chips. You know, because when you find one, you find like a billion of them. They're everywhere. You find one, and you always have to follow it back to the source, which is always like an M&M or a cookie or a circus peanut. Come on, circus peanuts. I love circus peanuts. All right. I know, I know Pastor Larry's shaking his head right now. You see, our thinking is the exact same way. It starts with one bad thought, but over time you find your mind invaded with negative thoughts. Psychiatrist and author, Dr. Daniel Amen. Come on, Dr. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> All right, he calls these thoughts ants, automatic negative thoughts. Come on, wow. I couldn't have made that up. These thoughts cloud your thinking, but worse, the ability to make decisions. You see, the, these ants begin to form thought patterns, patterns of this world. You see, just like ants in the kitchen, you can trace them back to a source. Now visualize this for a moment. That source can be an old way of thinking. Maybe it's a mixtape from your childhood. It's like following the ants, tracing them back to this old, molded M&M. But instead, we need to trace them back to a source, the true source, the pure and powerful word of God, rivers of living water. All right, let's be honest. Let's be honest. What's on your mixtape? Could there be something on there that's holding you back? Maybe it's bitterness or jealousy, unforgiveness. Or is it addictions like pornography and chemical dependency? See, in my own journey to find freedom from addictions, I've learned of the reticular activating system, or RAS. Everybody say RAS. RAS. See, the RAS is a part of your brain that acts like a filter. Some even call it a bouncer, deciding what to let into your mind. See, it helps you find whatever you want. This is why as soon as you buy a car that nobody else has and you drive off the lot, you see 15 of them going home. <laughs> but here's the thing. The Raz will continue to attract what you've done in the past because that's what you've constantly allowed into your mind. Wow. So unless you change your thinking, you're going to get the same result. I love how science is catching up to the word of God. You see, Bible has another name for these ants, and they're called false arguments, the negative lies that are attacking our minds. Check it out, 2 Corinthians 10.5. We destroy false arguments. We pull down every proud obstacle that is raised against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive and make it obey Christ. Come on, somebody. Oh, and the Raz, the Bible calls strongholds, patterns of false thinking that are built on lies that have become convictions, our own truths, and not God's truths. Check this out, 2 Corinthians 10.4. The weapons that we use in our fight are not the world's weapons, but God's powerful weapons, which we use to destroy strongholds. You see, just like the Raz, strongholds attract the things that we are constantly allowing into our minds. It begins to seek out for us bad relationships, offense, seek out fear, discouragement, and ways 
to keep us in the prison of our own thinking. And you keep pressing play on your old mixtape. You got to write this down. Thoughts are invisible and thoughts are spiritual. You see, the devil is your enemy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy by attacking your mind and making you believe that you are either the master of your own life or you're so full of fear that you're afraid to live a life that makes a difference. The enemy attacks your mind because he wants you to live a small life believing in a small God. Somebody needs to hear that again. The enemy attacks your mind because he wants you to live a small life believing in a small God. You see, this spiritual battle is unseen, and the prize is your invisible thoughts. Thoughts that lead to gossip, overspending, lust. Things that have led you away from God or that have held you back. But you see, God isn't mad at you. God loves you so much that he doesn't just want to change your outward experience. He wants to heal your mind. Now, if you've grown tired of these things, tired of the enemy, it's time to what? To remix the tape and renew your mind. Come on. If you guys are still with me in the chat, right? I'm with you, Pastor. All right, let's go back to Romans 12. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, check this out. If you got a pen, write this down. If not, grab a pen. Write this down. Okay. You can't kill the flesh until you crucify your thoughts. You can't kill the flesh until you crucify your thoughts. Here's the thing. We cannot offer our bodies as a living sacrifice until you first offer your thoughts as a living sacrifice. The key is to first worship God with your thoughts. Now, maybe you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, I get it. But put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. What do I have to do next? I'm glad you asked. Because we're going to go back to that CD player that Pops got me, and I'm going to give you four points, four control buttons to help you, what? To remix the tape and renew your mind. All right, number one, the fast forward button. There it is. Learn to press the fast forward button on your feelings. Don't let yourself be controlled by your feelings. Just because you feel something doesn't make the situation true. See, your feelings should not be the last word before you take any action. You need to press fast forward on those feelings first so that you can investigate, figure out why you're feeling this way, and then ask questions. You see, most times that we assume or imagine scenarios based on the ants instead of reality. So here's an example. How many times, how many times have we thought somebody was angry at us because they didn't reply to our text message when they just didn't get it? I don't know about you guys, but cell phone reception, cell phone reception sucks in the foothills. Okay, so you have to ask questions. But hold on. Before you run off and ask someone's opinion, what does the word of God say? And what does Jesus say? Jesus says, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking. You see, repent, repent isn't some super theological word. It just means change directions, change your mind. Now let's go to point number two, the rewind button. Yeah. There is no need to press the rewind button when you have a response and not a reaction. How many, time, how many times have you thought this? Oh, if I could just go back, I probably wouldn't have said that. You see, there are so many times that I wish I could push that rewind button so that I could have a better response than in my original reaction. Just ask my wife. You see, God loves us so much that he gives us the power to have a response and not a reaction by controlling our thoughts, but not through willpower or by ignoring them, 
but by replacing them. So check this out. Matthew chapter 4. See, Jesus is in the desert, and he's being tempted by the devil. Man, I love this story. Many scholars believe that this attack happened in Jesus' mind. In every battle, Jesus didn't try to reason with the devil. Nah. He didn't close his eyes and act like the devil wasn't there. He spoke the word of God directly back to those thoughts. God gives us his word so that we can have a response and not a reaction. You see, when those negative, that negative mixtape starts to play in your mind, you can't do it. You're weak. You'll never make it. You say, I take this thought captive and I make it obey Christ because I am strong and courageous and I am called by God to be the voice of his praise. Come on. When there's racial unrest and a global pandemic and killer hornets, your fear starts to rise up in you. You say, I take this thought captive and I make it obey Christ because I will not fear because God is with me. Come on, it's like a sidekick to the devil's face. You have to repeat scriptures like these over and over again until that thought and that temptation or that trigger disappears. Okay. And if you do that, then there's no need to press that rewind button because that mistake, that regret, that post... That sin never happens. Listen, repeating scripture may take you 15 seconds. It may, take you, it may take you all night. Sometimes you get it right, but other times you miss it. But don't give up. It gets easier because you get better. I promise you, I promise you, there is power when you speak the word of God. I even started blurting out scripture during my, my workouts so I can finish them. You can just ask my wife. Hey, but it's better than cursing at the TV, right? Look, I'm not going to lie to you. If you get this, it's life-changing. But it's going to take work. You have to be reading God's word every single day. Listen, if you're absorbing so much more news, Netflix, or feeds than the word of God then it's a problem. And no wonder why you feel so discouraged or stressed out or fearful. Because if you want to live a better life, you have to live differently. This is how you remix the tape and renew your mind. Because God washes your mind, killing ants. All right, next up, point number three, the pause button. You're not on stop. You're just on pause. You see, the devil wants you to think that the stop button is pressed on your life. That there's no moving forward. This is a... Mic check. So this is a stronghold in your mind that nothing will ever change and nothing will ever work. So, so, so why even try, right? But here's the truth. The truth that our God is big enough to use anything and everything to heal. You see, in the last 10 years, issues of mental health have increased significantly. But so have the ways for us to get more help. So if you're experiencing anxiety, depression, and fear, hurts, or ha- habits that are, that are stopping you, from moving forward, remember, you're just on pause. Don't lose hope. See, God wants to heal you, and he can use therapy. He can use proper medication. He can use life groups. He can use celebrate recovery. God can use anything and everything to heal because he is a big God. Now, sometimes sometimes the methods that he uses are different. But that's only because he wants to use you so that you can help someone else in the future. Now it's time for the closer. Come on. Point number four, the play button. You better press play on the Holy Spirit. You better press play on the Holy Spirit. Okay, so back in the day, we called it a mixtape. Back in my day, we called it a burnt CD. 
and you would carry around this album in your car with hundreds of CDs in them. Today we call it a playlist. Praise God for Spotify. But you know that special song, that summer jam, that you would listen to over and over again, right? You would listen to it for hours, even days. And for Amanda's right now, it's Hamilton, right? Now look, remember how it would make you feel? How it seems to make everything better, like a comforter. You're singing and humming and dancing, and it's on your mind all day. You have it playing at home, in the gym, at work, in your earphones. It's the only sound that you want to listen to. And some of you know where I'm going with this. In a season where every voice is telling you what to do or what to believe, you need to be listening to one voice all day. You see, this battle may be invisible, but our God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus. He sent his son Jesus to, so that we could have the visible image of the invisible God. And it gets better. Jesus leaves and he sends the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the helper, so that we can have the mind of Christ. So the same thoughts that are on God's mind can be on yours all the time. But just like that hit song, you have to keep pressing play on the Holy Spirit. Believe him. Believe that he wants to be a part of everything that you're doing. Even those small mundane parts of your day. Listen, I know that times are hard right now, but don't get distracted and don't forget your faith. With everything that is happening, don't get caught up in the world's mixtape. You have to remix the tape and renew your mind. You see, by training your mind to seek God in everything. And check this out. You guys remember the Raz? Remember how it helps you seek out what you want the most? God says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added to you. Your thinking will follow and you will attract peace. You will find love and find hope and you will find the best in every situation. You see, you look for him everywhere and you will train your mind to give you everything you want. Because all your heart wants is God. This is how you remix the tape and renew your mind. Praise Jesus. Do you receive this message? All right. Well, listen, I hope this message has blessed you. But before we end our time together, I just want to take a moment right now to invite those of you who are watching, who you want to change your mind. You want to change your mixtape. But you've never stepped into a relationship with Jesus. You see, God offers us a new way of thinking and a new way to live. But it has to start with this first step. You see, making Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. And we can do it right now with one decision, one simple step. You see, this is a fresh start. I encourage you. It's not over. And God loves you. And he wants you to try again. But you have to surrender to let him lead. You see, God knows everything. Everything you've done. And he's going to wipe it away clean. Because God is in control. And God is on your side. Today, you can start to have the mind of Christ. And start to get a mixtape of peace. Will you pray this prayer with me? Father in heaven. I thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus. I believe in the Son of God, that He died on the cross for me, and I repent of my sins. I commit to following you. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross. I will follow you from this day forward, and I will serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you were one of those people who prayed that prayer, Congratulations. I want to welcome you to the family. I got some next steps for you. You know, earlier Pastor Anthony uh, mentioned that Connect card. 
Uh, I have our team post that link back up there. If you could do me a favor, fill out that connect card. And then down at the bottom, it says, uh, you can check out the box that says, I accepted Christ. Check that box. Uh, so a member of our team is going to reach out to you. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you, give you some next steps. The next thing I want you to do is do something brave and bold. If you could raise a hand in the chat or just type, I accepted Jesus. We want to congratulate with you and just keep celebrating with you. Thank you, everyone, for spending some time with us today. We love you. God bless you and make it a great week.